Hello, Westview. It's good to be able to be with you today as we gather again for worship in all different places, for some of us in different times. And we do hope that as we worship together, you have a sense of God's presence, uh, that you have a sense of connecting as a community, and that this is a truly meaningful time of worship for all of us. Uh, just as we begin to remind you that at Westview, we started up a WhatsApp business uh, line, and you can connect to that. The number will be on the screen. And we won't spam you, it's just so that we can communicate information to you. And if you'd like to be part of that, please feel free to sign up for that line. Now I want to invite you to prepare your heart for worship. And so if you can just take a moment to still yourself. Whatever helps you to get centered and connected with a sense of God's Spirit. You may want to slow your breathing or close your eyes or open your hands. Let's just take a moment in silence as we prepare for this time of worship. now I want to invite you just to think for a moment about what you've been hearing around the events in the world at the moment. What visuals have you seen? What pictures? What videos? What graphs have you seen of statistics, numbers? What news stories have you heard from around the world? Just think for a moment of how you've responded to those things and now, as here in South Africa, and I know in a few other countries, we enter into lockdown. How does that make you feel at this moment? Now I want to invite you to shift your, your focus. Look around you, wherever you are. If you're able to see beauty through windows, or maybe you're sitting outside, Notice that beauty, or maybe you have a picture on your wall or the faces of your loved ones sitting around you. Or maybe you can just take a moment to hold in your mind something that is good and true and beautiful. Just focus on that for a moment. And I invite you to look internally Find that place within you, however small, where hope is glowing. That place where you know that there is something bigger than us, that there's a life, a consciousness, a love, a, a divine reality that holds it all together and that is with us right now. Take hold of that light of God within you. Cling to it. Let it lift your heart to find joy and peace and even celebration in this time. And with that in mind, Let's join together in song as we celebrate this God who is with us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ. I live there in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. 
then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand and so let's continue in prayer together let's pray God, as we gather in worship in different places, different times, we praise you for your presence that always surrounds us. We praise you for your love that never leaves us. We praise you for your life that always sustains us, always strengthens us, that always inspires us, even in the toughest of times. God, in this moment, where so much is happening that is so scary and chaotic in our world, we confess our weakness, we confess our fear. God, we are frail, we are vulnerable, we doubt, we start to feel that we are alone, we lose hope, and then we start to hoard what we have or what we need, we ignore the ways we put one another at risk, we panic. Forgive us for these things. But we thank you that you do forgive, not just to let us off the hook, but to lead us into a better way. And so that we can learn to live that better way, you keep your life pulsing within us by your Spirit. And so we pray now, O oh God, that you would keep us connected with you, with one another, and with our best selves. Keep us strong, keep us hopeful, Keep us compassionate through this difficult time of physical separation. God, we need you. And we thank you and praise you that you are here for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in song together. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save forever Author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave So take me as you find me all my fears and failures fill my life again i give my life to follow 
everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Now I surrender. Oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave everyone needs compassion a love that's never failing let mercy fall on me as part of our worship we offer our gifts to God Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And so we bring some of our treasure. And if you'd like to use this moment as an offering of worship to God, our bank details are on the screen and you can take this moment to give. Uh, we'll also have them on the screen at the end of this video in our SnapScan code and our SWIFT code for those who are not in South Africa. Uh, so watch for that at the end of the video. If, if, if you feel in your heart that you want to add a giving moment into your worship today. And we're going to give you just a moment now uh, to enter into that moment. If all you give is a prayer or praise, that's also great. But if you'd like to give financially, feel free to do that now. And so, God, as we bring these, our gifts and offerings before you, we just want to pause and acknowledge your Lordship over us. We acknowledge that, indeed, you are Lord, Lord over everything, that even in these difficult times, you, our God, continues to be Lord, and you continue to reign in our lives, in our world, and in our hearts. And so, Lord, we just want to lift up all the prayers that your people are offering to you in various places at this time. We just want to pray for your blessing upon them. We want to pray for your blessing upon their gifts. And we ask for all of these in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. We light this candle. Uh, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. And so as we turn our attention to scripture, we listen for God's word to us today. I read to you from Mark chapter 5, reading the first two verses and then from verse 9 through to verse 13. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. And the demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. We give thanks to God for this reading from Scripture. Good morning, church. Thank you to Ian for reading the scripture reading for us this morning. We have been journeying together since the season of Lent began in the Gospel of Mark. It is in this Gospel of Mark where we have been asking ourselves the question, how do we follow Jesus and what does following Jesus mean 
for us as a community, but also for us as individuals. I think it is safe to say that when we started the series, it was not something that any of us had ever imagined that part of following Jesus would mean that we might have to worship uh, in this particular way in which we are Not to even mention the fact that as we worship this morning, most of us are anxious about a number of things as a result of this pandemic. And so this morning we continue our journey together through Mark's Gospel as we look at the topic of suffering in the Gospel of Mark. In other words, does Jesus have anything to say to us uh, in the midst of suffering? We have read together from the Gospel of Mark and we have read from chapter 5. One of the things that are very clear to me as I read through the Gospel of Mark is that in one of the ways in which Mark presents Jesus to us, is that Mark presents Jesus to us as one who deals with our suffering. That in Mark's gospel, Jesus is not one who shies away from suffering and from difficult situations. Mark certainly presents Jesus as this one who deals or who is able to deal with our suffering at various levels whether through the healing of the sick, whether through casting out demons, Mark continues to say to us, Jesus is one who knows about our suffering, one who can do something about our suffering. And so in our reading then this morning, Jesus is crossing over the Sea of Galilee to the land of the Gerasene. The land of the Gerasene, we are told, is the land of Gentiles. And no self-respecting rabbi would actually venture to go into this land. But here we see Jesus taking his disciples and venturing on a trip to this particular land. And so we are told that when he gets there, he's confronted immediately by a man who is possessed Actually, I would say he's more than possessed, but he's actually occupied by demons because that's what a legend was. It was a unit by which the Roman military organized itself. And so this man is not just possessed by one unclean spirit or by one demon, but rather he's occupied by a host of them, dozens of them, hundreds of them, perhaps more, we really do not know. Though for what it is worth in the Roman army, we do know that a legend is a designation for 6,000 soldiers. So we can pretty be sure that Mark employs this term to impress upon us that this particular person was occupied by a lot of unclean spirit. And so his story is a tragic story. His story is a story of loneliness. He is a young man living in tombs. Tombs are a place of utter desolation as well as uncleanliness. Tombs are a place where there is no life, but it is a place where death reigns supreme. This particular young man is a hazard to himself, but not just to himself, but to himself as well as the community that he lives with. And so his community sends him out to go and live among the dead so that it does not become a hazard or a risk to those whom he shares life with. And so in this tragic story, in this story of suffering, we then see Mark's Jesus entering into the story. And as Mark's Jesus enters into this story, we are told that Jesus immediately heals the sick man. He heals the man by giving permission to the many spirits that were occupying the man to flee from him and enter into the head of pigs. In response then to this healing, 
we are told that people are amazed. And some people are probably a little bit uncomfortable, perhaps. The man is grateful. He does what all of us do, that once we have encountered God, we want to live in a particular way, to live in a particular relationship with God. And so the man says to Jesus, can I come with you? But Jesus tells him to stay put, to stay where he is and to continue sharing the word of God and what God had done for him in his own homeland or his own hometown. It's a tragic and yet a beautiful story at the same time. When preaching on this passage previously, I've always focused on the power of names. You know the names that people give to us, the names that we are given at birth, and the names that people give to us because of who we are and what we become in life. These names carry weight. These names sometimes define who we are. It really breaks my heart to hear this young man when Jesus poses the question to him, what is your name? And he responds by saying, legion. By saying legion, he has defined himself by his deficits. He defines himself by his sickness. He defines himself by his weakness. He defines himself by everything that is not well with him and in his life. I am still struck by this reality that it is possible for us to define ourselves in terms of our weakness that it is possible for us to accept our pain and our suffering to a point of normalizing it. But at this time, I am even more struck, not so much, by what Jesus said to this captive man, or by the question that Jesus asked him, or even by his response to Jesus' question. I think I'm captured at this moment by the place where Jesus finds him. That Jesus travels in order for Jesus to meet him. That this particular person does not need to leave their place in order for Jesus to heal them. But that Jesus makes a decision. Jesus moves towards him. Jesus leaves his own comfort and he goes into this unknown place, into this land, of the Gentiles, that Jesus is the one who makes the first call and the first step to meet this young man in his suffering, that Jesus risks not only his life but as well as the lives of his disciples in order for Jesus to meet with this young man where this young man is at. When we read the previous chapter, which is chapter 4, we are told about Jesus coming the storm. And that is when they were making their trip from the other side of the lake and going to this young man. We are told of this dramatic storm that erupts in the sea. And so Jesus meets us where we are. But the thing about Jesus and him going into this place which represents death, is that if there's any place that Jesus was supposed to be at as a well-respected Jewish rabbi, this was the last place that you would expect to find Jesus. But when you think about it, this is actually where God always shows up in the Gospels. That God always shows up where God is not expected. And I think this is also true even in our own lives. That as we think about suffering, as we think about our past experiences of going through stressful events in our lives, I can think of a number of events in my own life where God showed up, where I least expected God to show up. And so at our moments of profound doubt, at our moments of profound grief, at our moments of profound loss, at our moments 
of profound confusion, at our moments of profound defeat, that is where Mark's Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up to meet us, not only in our highs, not only when everything is going well, but when we are at our lowest, like this young man, when everybody else has deserted him, it is at that point, at that moment, where Jesus shows up. And so, God in Jesus shows up in our lives and meets us in our moments of suffering. It is worth noting as well that after this particular encounter, after Jesus had met this young man in his suffering, and after God had done that which only God can do to heal this man of the many spirits that were occupying him, Jesus then sails back. All of which says to us, the whole trip, the risky sea, all of that was just so that Jesus could come and meet this one person, meet them in their place of suffering, meet them in their place of need. All of this then suggests to me that Mark's Jesus is a Jesus who is willing to go an extra mile, that God has revealed in Jesus is a God who welcomes us when nobody else is willing to welcome us. That when we are in our lowest, when we are confused, when we do not know what the future holds for us, it is at that moment that Jesus shows up. The story reveals not only the fears and the suffering of the man who is named Legion. But I believe that the story also has the power and the potential to also reveal some of our fears, especially as a country and as the world, we wrestle with this COVID-19. As we try to think about the implications of this pandemic to all of us, that comes with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fears. And so maybe the question that I want to end with this morning, I just want to ask you a question. What in your life, when you hear the word suffering, what situation, what incident, what episode of your life could be summed up by this one word, suffering? In other words, where, are you, where is suffering? in your own life. I can think of a number of places in my own life where the word suffering might become true for me. And I want you to imagine how your life could be if you were to invite Jesus into that space that is represented by this word suffering in your life. What would it look like for you? What would it mean for you for Jesus to meet you at your point of suffering. Amen. So Peter is asking about what suffering was in our lives, and I want to give you a moment to reflect on that, maybe express that in, in, in some different ways. The, the story spoke about these demons driving this man mad. What demons are we wrestling with that take us to the brink of sanity what what fear what sense of scarcity maybe what uh, distrust of one another what are the things that are tempting us that are challenging us that are hurting us at the moment as we are forced to isolate ourselves physically there's the temptation to isolate ourselves emotionally to shut down our compassion our common humanity our awareness of our connectedness with one another, with all living things. I, I just invite you just to spend a moment in stillness around that. And think particularly about where in your life you need Jesus to speak, where you need to find Christ.
Now, when you've identified your own personal sense of suffering, your own darkness, can I invite you to speak to it? Even speak out loud if it helps you, but speak light into that darkness. Speak peace. Speak love in the name of Christ. Take a moment just to do that now, either in the silence of your mind or, or out loud. And maybe in the next weeks and months, you can commit to continue to speak those words of life and hope. Even in those times where you're not sure you believe them, but just commit to speaking into the darkness words of light. And so with that in mind, let's join together in prayer. Let's pray together. There are times, God, when we lose ourselves. We lose our sense of humanity. The darkness becomes too deep and it begins to define us. And that's when we lose our souls, when we start to hurt ourselves and one another. And so we pray for your light to shine in our darkness. The light of your love to keep us compassionate and caring toward one another and ourselves. Maybe you can just take a moment to offer a silent prayer, inviting God's love into our world. We pray for the light of your peace to calm our troubled minds and free us from the crippling power of fear. Again, in silence, invite God's peace into your life and your corner of the world. We pray for the light of your wisdom to guide our leaders and to help us to act thoughtfully and considerately and kindly as we navigate this crisis together. Once again, in silence, invite the light of God's wisdom into your world. pray, God, for the light of your Spirit to fill our world, to lead us through the darkness, to empower those who risk themselves for the sake of the greater good. And so in silence, let's pray for God's Spirit to make the presence of God known to us. so, God, we pray that we may all find a deeper sense of wholeness and of unity as we follow you, even in the chaos. In Jesus' name, amen. And so as we wrap up this time of worship, let's spend a moment in a song of celebration, of hope, a song that invites the light of God into the midst of our suffering. The light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire, forever flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word. shadows into your radiance. 
wounds. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. and mercy sent forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here may our lives tell your story, shine on me. So as we wrap up this time of worship, we invite you to continue into the rest of this week in the light of Christ. And we invite you to carry that light with you into your suffering, into the suffering around you, into the chaos and the darkness of this time. We hope you found this time of worship helpful and God bless you.